portrait of fear. There's something evil about this place, Ben Lawrence exclaimed. Your uncle didn't know it when he was alive. He was always at sea. I took care of renting this place for him, and I know. All of the last three tenants, young gentlemen like yourself, were found dead in their beds, dead of heart failure. No one knows just what happened, the lawyer continued quietly. They just dropped out of sight. And each time when the constable came to this house to investigate, he found a pile of old newspapers and a row of milk bottles that had never been taken inside, out on the steps. A load of yellow, mildewed letters that had never been taken out of the mailbox. And inside this house, the young men fully dressed and dead on the bed. Well, gasped Hal Carlyle, his eyes turning from the lawyer to his side, to the gray stone house that loomed so large before them in the gathering dusk. Well, very nice of Uncle George to leave the place to me in his will. I guess the least I can do in return is to solve the mystery immediately. Nothing Ben Lawrence could say will dissuade his young client. So, with troubled eyes and a heavy heart, the lawyer took his leave. Hal was left alone. It was an ordinary enough house, Hal decided finally, relaxing on his bed after a tour of inspection. Ben Lawrence was just an imaginative, old... He leaped violently to his feet. There was something, or someone, in the bedroom with him. There had been a sound of some kind, and a vague, pleasant odor. Suddenly, Hal knew. What he had heard was the unmistakable sound of a woman brushing her hair, and the odor was a scent of fine French perfume. Who is it? Hal called urgently. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. But his only answer was a barely perceptible flickering of the electric light and a slow, almost inaudible laugh. The tinkling, silvery laugh of a beautiful woman. It was the laugh that did it. It was maddening. He ran from room to room with his heart pounding, determined to find the thing that was laughing at him. There was no sound at all now, not even the rustle of silk that he'd followed at first. But somehow Hal knew it was there, teasing him, leading him on, daring him to find it. Finally, he gave up the chase and sank back wearily on his bed again. This is ridiculous. I know there wasn't anything he thought to himself grimly. The laugh tinkled again, as though his invisible companion was reading his mind. Hal looked up sharply, his eye caught by a bubble of pale, glittering light that suddenly illuminated a picture hanging on the opposite wall. His breath jammed in his throat. It was a portrait of a woman, tall and unbelievably beautiful, her smoke-colored eyes, smiling down at him, her rosy lips curved in a smile. Hal had never even dreamed of such beauty. He lay there, gaping, dimly understanding that the bubble of light, the sounds he'd heard, and the woman in the portrait were all one and the same. It is you, isn't it? he whispered, his eyes never moving from the picture. The pale light danced up and down the wall. The room filled with intoxicating scent of perfume. The rustle of silks and satins grew louder. And slowly, unbelievably, the lady of the portrait gathered her skirts together daintily and stepped out of her frame, the light forming an unearthly halo around her head. She walked towards Hal, noiselessly, her lips still curved in that same vacant smile, her eyes hard and penetrating, boring into his. No, please, don't, Hal pleaded, terror striking at his heart. But the lady just smiled, bent her head gracefully, and with lips as cold and clammy as seaweed, kissed him. Ben Lawrence was scared. He hadn't heard a word from Hal Carlyle since the fateful day he'd left the boy alone in that accursed house. Walking up the driveway now, The lawyer tried to tell himself that he was being foolish, that Hal was perfectly all right. Suddenly, he gave a choked little cry, his face turning the color of pale, wet cement. On the doorstep lay a pile of old, uncollected newspapers. Beside them stood a row of milk bottles that had never been taken inside. In the mailbox lay a number of yellow, mildewed letters, 
A faint odor of decay hung in the air.